Hey, you riders. Thanks for joining me again. Today I'm on the uh, venerable Triumph Street Triple 1200 RS. To give it its full name. Um, I've got this bike for a few days while my uh, Tiger is in for service. So I've already been out a couple of times on it. Uh, now I thought I'd give my uh, thoughts on the bike. So stick with me and I'll tell you what I think of uh, this uh, brute of a machine. <laughs> so, first things first, one thing that needs to be addressed is definitely the suspension. It's rock hard, you don't get away from it. It's uh, it's almost too much on the ride, I'd say. So it's all fully adjustable, obviously. But there's no getting away from the fact that you get pummeled. <laughs> you know, on anything other than uh, smooth roads. You're going to get jolted. Like this. <laughs> it's almost like being on a hardtail. So that translates to uh, a bike that is not particularly comfortable as to have that at a stop. I wouldn't want to be doing any uh, long distances on it. In terms of the rest of the comfort package, uh, the seat's not actually too bad. I mean, it's it's not uh, <laughs> supremely soft, but uh, it's not the worst seat I've sat on. got a slight bend in my knees but uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, massively uncomfortable again I wouldn't go touring on this bike so for the kind of riding I'd be doing it'd be fine you know, I can live with that. It does take a little bit of time to dial into the handling of it. Possibly because of that rock hard suspension. But once you get the hang of muscling it around, She turns in nicely. Yeah, so with a handlebar position, I am. You are slint forward, uh, but not as extreme as the uh, 1200 RR. So it's okay. You're a bit more upright on this. So uh, you do, I mean in town you're getting a bit of weight on your wrists but out on the open, open road it's not really a problem. Uh, one thing I have noticed is that the clutch is particularly heavy. 
all day. That's not only going to be a problem uh, when you're in town because obviously you've got the quick shifter. So once you're out first, you don't need to uh, touch it. In terms of vibrations, it's not bad, it uh, feels quite smooth, you get, you get a little bit of tingling through the bar, but uh, it's not. It's not unpleasant. And uh, cut off! <laughs> Yeah, it's not uh, unpleasant. Check me the GoPro is still there at the back. So yeah, comfort wise, you're okay for you know short to uh, medium rides but uh, it's not a Tora and uh, it doesn't claim to be. In terms of screen the wind blast um, it's actually not doing a bad job to be honest. I mean it is a naked so you will you do feel it on the, uh, the higher speeds but so uh, yeah that little screen there there's a pretty good job of uh, deflecting the wind over uh, you as best you can the levers and pegs so I already mentioned that the, the clutch is particularly heavy um, but apart from that all of the levers are quality you feel nicer if you feel nicely weighted Uh, all the uh, pegs seem to be in the right position for me. So, you know, compared to that respect. Far red mirrors, obviously, clearly behind. They do vibrate a bit at uh, higher revs, but uh, just about to see what's happening behind. No complaints there. They don't look too bad either. And right along this uh, lovely view you've got, all the attention to the detail in front of you, like the uh, lovely Triumph logo, the handlebar clamp. Everything feels look, looks nice from the cockpit. There is one thing that would be, do my OCD nutting. Uh, Odin's logo upside down on a shock on the spring. <laughs> no, but apart from that. Attention to detail is fantastic I and mean, build quality seems pretty good as you'd, as you'd expect from such a premiumly priced bike. Everything feels, looks good, looks and feels nice from the welds. Right down to them gorgeous wheels. Yeah, so all I see this is a brand new bike so it's difficult to guess what it'll look like after 10,000 miles in including winter riding you know as it is she uh, she looks good definitely a striking looking machine um, I think every speed triple has always looked pretty good um, this is probably my second favourite after the uh, 2005 model. 
Um, I do prefer the um, under seat pipes like on the 1050 RS. But otherwise, I think in terms of looks, this is beautiful. Lots of attention to detail. I think they, these are might be extras. Actually, I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that. All the attention to detail. Glorious uh, old in shocks and forks. Not quite sure on the uh, fluo stripe though. Yeah, I'd, I'd get rid of them personally. The uh, tail tidy, although they've made an effort to make it look good, it's still ridiculously long. And look at that. Look at that beauty. She's a bit filthy. Not my fault. Uh, I, got, I got her like this. Now, in terms of price, I mean, this puppy is uh, £15,500. That's uh, a lot of money. And there is a lot of tech in it. I mean, obviously, you've got the uh, suspension, you've got that. Um, all the uh, usual lean sensitive rider aids um, but there's no denying that is a lot of money for a naked bike um, whether it's worth that money or not I don't know that's, that's for you to decide but uh, I'm guessing that most people would actually pay for these on PCP um, so the, the uh, actual cost itself is probably irrelevant it's actually 177.5 brake horsepower and, and the, the uh, torque is uh, 125 newton meters at 9,000 revs per minute this is an engine that fr fries on revs though I mean you you get the both best of both worlds with these uh, triples I think that's why I, that's why I love them for now the seat height is at uh, 830 mils so it's a little bit high, so if you're quite, if you're a bit short of leg, you know, it's something to consider. You might want to sit on one first. And the tank is actually 15 and a half liters. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how many how many miles you get out of a tank, but I'm guessing you're probably looking about um, 150. Now, the service intervals are pretty good actually. Um, 10,000 miles which is a uh, pretty impressive I think because it's not going to be a cheap ride to run but uh, that uh, softens the blow a bit um, so pretty much concludes the uh, walk around really you know she's a great looking bike and uh, with a huge spec And a lovely colour. And uh, this Mac Grey is beautiful. Let's see, the thing I'll do is probably get rid of these flashes of yellow there, wouldn't they? Just spoil it a bit. Apart from that, top mark. Let's get riding again. Uh, so, one thing that is pretty nifty on this bike is a, it's all keyless, it's a fully keyless system, including the uh, fuel for the clap. Clap cap <laughs> um, so we turn that off so steering lock not engaged like that there's a button there and there you go steering lock engaged and uh, got a little warning on the screen yeah power on and this again just automatically it does take this TFT although it looks brilliant it does take a long time to load up which is a bit frustrating but uh, you can still start the bike with loading up and that but you know it's a bit Windows 95 oh, make sure we're recording so right, yeah. That, one thing I don't like about this bike is the feel from the clutch. It's 
very springy <coughs> and uh, If I was uh, in neutral with soy sand, yeah, it's a bit stringy and stiff. Springy and stiff, even. Should we try again? <laughs> right. Um, what can do now is show you some of the dash features actually. So, put your little button there. Press the phone button takes you back. But yeah, press that little joystick there. You can. So you got your dis You can change all the settings. So you got your display. Flick it over to the right. You can change the brightness. How you want it. And if you have to go down, click to approve it. Yeah, that's in. So left goes back. You've got different themes. So you can go different colours, but I like in furnace. So I'll keep it in that. Change language, change units. Handy if you're going abroad. Change time. You can uh, have your shift indicator. So you tell you when to shift. Change your item name. Then uh, on the bike, change your riding aids. So I mean I'm in sports, so I've got ABS in road. The map is in sport. Traction control is in sport. And I'm just I'll fit that into road so it's quite customizable service now that's quite odd because um, it's showing service over Jubilee so 263 miles but anyway I ain't got any warnings on there settings so you can disengage the traction control with a shift assist. Got the indicators got set to uh, self cancel or manual. So some self cancel. They're like on the um, uh, Target 100 GT Pro. Um, if you flick it quickly, flashes three times, and uh, flick it a little bit longer. And they stay on for a little long, for a bit longer. Not quite enough for my liking, but uh, it is what it is. So next is the uh, journey. You got uh, you got your trip computer there. Change all the so reset it on there. You got lap timer as well. If you want to do a lap of the uh, Rutland TT. Uh, fuel status. Um, so at the minute, I'm doing 99.9 miles per gallon. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, then you got all your Bluetooth functions. Also, I've already got this bike for a couple of days, so I'm not going to bother connecting my phone. But you got all the usual navigation, music controls, your phone, like SMS readout. You got a GoPro readout. Uh, you got a GoPro remote as well. But if it's anything like the um, Targon 100, it's uh, not worth it. So you can take name your Bluetooth unit. You can change. It's quite customizable. You can have like your notifications of what you want notified of. So add your devices. Then you got your, obviously you got your navigation. Oh yes, you can choose which uh, headsets uh, to send the instructions to by the it. Right or pillion or right and pillion. Let's listen to that exhaust. It 
is a great sounding bike. Yeah, so. Okay, let's uh, get on with it. So, obviously, that uh, lovely 1200 triple engine is full of character. Uh, it, it does thrive on revs though, but it is. Well, not a minute, I'm in third gear doing 44 miles an hour and it's barely a tick over. So, as we said, on the road, this is far more than you're ever going to need. I mean, <laughs> you just thrust it forward and that wasn't even at full throttle. And that was in third gear. If you had that in second, Everything, all the uh, ride waves will be kicking in. <laughs> Gearbox is uh, nice and smooth. It feels smoother on the 1200RR actually. Uh, this be this particular example. Yeah, nice. It is clunky going into first. But apart from that, Nothing to bloody hell. <laughs> That's a bit bumpy. Yeah, you're really giving your knees workout holding on. <laughs> so yeah, the quick shifter is lovely and smooth. As are most triumph uh, Shift assists. I tell you what, I'm all behind him and there's nothing there. It gives us a chance to set the brakes. Yep! <laughs> Front one good. Rear. Oh, I tell you what, the rear is pretty good actually. I'm just, as I said, just stamping on it. It's perfectly controlled. And both together. He got really good feel from that uh, front lever and the brakes are really progressive the forks don't dive too much fairly obvious because soon how stiff this bike is set up in terms of fueling absolutely fine no problems at all good connection with the throttle I was really positive, I mean even really look at that, I mean I'm being <laughs> really hampered with the throttle there. Anyway, where were we? Oh. Yes, this is another bike you really have to hold on to when you open the throttle. She loves these long sweeping bends, more than anything. Okay, we're going to come up uh, to the Benefield S's soon, which is uh, always a good test of a bike for me. That's one of my favourite sets of uh, bends in my local area. Okay, ready, set, go! <laughs> <laughs> front end, lift up then. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. She gets a C 
seal of approval around those bends for me. Doubly implanted. I do remember last year when I had one of these and uh, I had a bit of a moment, I must have hit some, something on the road. But uh, I do remember the front started to go light and then the rear and uh, how I didn't bin it, I don't know. But that was definitely a uh, bottom clenching moment. So I have to say there's one thing that uh, holds me back on this particular bike, that memory. Uh, so one question that uh, could be asked of me is that how does this compare to my speed twin? Now honestly as some of you may know my speed twin is uh, has been tweaked up a bit so it's not standard, it's a 2019 model. Uh, in terms of uh, handling out of the box, the speed truffle definitely wins. Um, the suspension on the speed twin standard is pretty poor. On here, obviously, it's fantastic kit, but it's just really stiffly set up. Engine wise for me it's a tie, I love both to be honest, they're both ribbon of character. And they're both really tractable. Comfort wise, I'd say they're probably the speed is probably slightly more comfortable but uh, there's not much in it. But, uh, as a standard really is going to depend on what you want. If you want maximum performance then you're going to want the uh, triple but if you want uh, I'd say maybe a little bit more character from your engine then yeah you probably want the twin. So yeah both uh, cracky bikes both work for if you're uh, at a uh, naked roadster.